Greetings YouTube. The following is going to be a discussion of OGL or Pathfinder, so if you're not really interested in those systems, this talk may not be worth your time. Now the category of aberration is kind of a catch-all. It's where you throw the really weird thing. The Lovecraftian beasts, the aboleths, the uh, flumps, things like that. Things that just fall well outside, you know, the standard <clears throat> beasts and humanoids and animals of uh, your standard fantasy setting. But within that category, there are some vast differences. As I mentioned, the aboleths and the flumps, they're significantly different from each other. You cannot predict the behavior or biological composition of one if you understand the other. Knowing a lot about aboleths is not really going to help you relate to flumps if you ever encounter one. It just isn't. They not only are completely different species, completely different cultures, they have no biological connection whatsoever. One lives deep in the subterranean oceans and one floats around on the surface and floats around they simply have nothing in common. Not to mention the flumps are almost always leaning toward the good alignments and the aboleths are brain, mind, soul stealing enslavers. So, you know, there's a vast difference between these two creatures. And yet, if you are a ranger and have the favored enemy category aberration, you for some reason understand the machinations and biological structure of both an aboleth and a flump. Why? How can that category be so broad as to encompass both the aboleth and the flump and all the other aberrations for that matter and give you any kind of a advantage over them? I mean, they're just, it, it's like saying you understand biology it's just too big a category. You have to specialize to get any kind of grasp on the details therein. And yet if you look at the humanoids on the fair enemy list, each one of them has their own category. Why? Some of them can even interbreed humans and half-elves, humans and orcs, and in some settings other races can interbreed. They're all essentially the same structure. Head, torso, two legs, two arms, major organs all in the chest cavity, brain inside the head, jugular vein here. Biologically, if you understand how to take out a human, you understand how to take out all of the other humanoids, including the monstrous humanoids and the giants. They're all built the same. It's all the same framework. It's all the same general structure, and like I said, some of them can interbreed. So there's not just some similarity there, folks. They actually share a whole lot of DNA. And yet, amongst the favored enemies, every single bloody race has its own category. Are you telling me that an elf and an orc are so incredibly different that if you understand how to relate to one, you have no idea how to relate to the other? Okay. This is a bit of hyperbole. This is an idea that was thrown off uh, a message board I read yesterday. But I think it's a valid point. Why is it that the category of aberrations is so broad to encompass anything under the sun, and yet the humanoids are so narrow that if you understand how to beat a halfling at um, arm wrestling, you can't figure out how to take on a half-orc? I just, I just don't get it. I'm not looking to change the rules on this. That would make a massive difference. I mean, significant difference if you had to change. So if you put all the humanoids under one category, people are always going to take that because you encounter lots and lots of humanoids. And no, I am not suggesting that every single aberration species should have its own category because that dilutes the favorite enemy ability to the point where it is essentially useless. No one would take any of the aberration sub-abilities because you just don't you know, encounter them as often unless you have a very strange flump-based campaign, I suppose. So, but I, would thought, I thought I would throw this out there and see what other people have for thoughts about this. Why is it that the humanoids are considered so specific and the aberrations are considered so generic um, in your standard D&D &D setting? And yes, in case anyone asks, flumps 
are my favorite monster in all of D&D. &D.